And happy Saturday afternoon to everybody out there. Sorry I didn't get you last week. I've been a little sketchy lately. Schedule's been a little hectic since I started school and homework and lectures and all that good fun. So I might be a little bit more sporadic, but I'm going to still do my best. So today's nothing glorious, nothing magnificent, nothing impressive, but it's routine maintenance. When I got the Springer, as you all know, it was dirty. It hadn't been loved on, hadn't been maintained. So today I think is going to be the last of our big day one maintenance stuff, and that's going to be a three-hole change. I've put less than a thousand miles on it since I got the bike because one, weather, and two, I knew it needed the three-hole change. I don't know the last time it was done, so at least this way I can track it. So I got out to Harley today, picked up some primary fluid, some transmission fluid, and an oil filter along with a couple of spark plugs. I'm uh, not going to be doing the spark plugs today because I need to check my maintenance manual and see what my gap needs to be um, and inspect the ones that are coming out of there because I don't know. I don't know last time they were changed. I don't know how new they are. If they're fine, we'll leave them. But uh, so got Springer all set up here. I did kind of stand it upright a little bit more with my lovely two by four red neckedness. So got my pan, got everything situated. I'm going to do my best to show you where the plugs are, but there's one of them. And you twin cam owners probably know this is I believe the transmission plug straight up through the middle between the two suspension canisters which is gonna be a bear to show you on camera but i'm gonna try so bear with me so what we got is four quarts of 2050 this is what the previous owner gave me some ams oil it's a full sin now, i'm only going to use three and a half but this is what we're going to use because i didn't have to pay for it got a black oil filter because I just, I like how it blends into the darkness and this becomes almost invisible versus the chrome. And then we got our two quarts uh, for the primary and the transmission. Uh, I'll go over how much of each I'm going to use. It's not a full quart. Uh, I believe the primary on this is 26 ounces and the transmission is 20 to 24. I've got it written down. I will let everybody know. Got our, stu our two spark plugs, if anybody's interested. That's the part number on them. If you happen to have a 2000 Softail Springer, here's your spark plugs. Then we need a T40 Torx bolt for our primary, and then a 5 16 socket for transmission and uh, oil. So, that being said, let's get over here to the bike. And... See if I can't grunt and groan and get some light here because we're probably going to want it as long as I don't blind the camera. And see what we got here. So on the high side, where are we at here? We got a bolt here, which uh, should be our oil. And then I'm going to do this blind, but straight up through here, you should see, I hope you see, another bolt which ought to be our transmission. And those are our 5 8 bolts. Hopefully you saw that. And then, of course, it's different, but on the primary side, we've got our T40 bolt here. So we'll get all that drained, plus our Torx bolts for the, the primary here, which I'm not sure what they are, but they're probably a 25 or a 27. Yours might differ they they might they might not who knows but i'm gonna figure out what i need there get everything drained so i like to when i'm pulling the oil i like to pull the drain plug first then get back up here and pull the plug so that way i'm not just pissing oil all over the place i can kind of control the feed of it and i'll do the same thing with the transmission i'll pull the drain plug and then i will pull the cap Again, just to control the flow rate of what's coming out of the bike. So uh, aside from that, we're gonna let this run for a minute, maybe two, just to kind of get things circulating. And we'll get that old stuff out and get the new stuff in. And I'll see if I don't uh, 
you know, kind of fill you guys in on the quality of the oil or fluids that are coming out of it. So we'll see. Hold up. All right. So as I'm sure most of you are aware, these drain plugs, plugs here, this end on the top is magnetic. And we want to check that out to make sure that there's no huge metal chunks on it. If there is, you got a problem. But small shavings, that's what this is here for, is to collect those so they don't go anywhere. So, and then we've got our little rubber gasket, which I've already, I already took off of the transmission plug and replace and reinstall because you can't really see anything anyway. I've got these replacement O-rings that I got off of eBay or Amazon because they're just a hell of a lot cheaper than what Harley wants. Let's see if I can't find them in my miscellaneous bucket of goodies here. I just had them, so you wouldn't think they'd be too buried, but apparently I buried them well enough. Ah, here we go. So, says, get that reflection out of there, the Captain O-Ring, uh, part number 11105. It's a 50 pack. I think this was 20 bucks. So, as opposed to the, I don't know, two or three dollars a piece that Harley wants for these cheap ass silicone O rings. That's the end of my rant. But for 20 bucks, I got 50 of them and I've been running them on the Street Glide, the Fat Boy, and now the Springer. I've had zero problems. So. Uh, taking a look at the transmission fluid, it did, it had the shavings on the magnet, not a big deal. Uh, real, real minuscule. Uh, the fluid itself is actually really clean. So maybe that got changed relatively recently. I don't know. The oil is black, so that needed to be changed. That's currently draining. And I will say this is the oldest motorcycle I've done, a three hole on, and that oil drains slow, even with the, the plug pulled out of the oil bag it is slow so we're gonna let that sit and do its thing and if, when it's done then i will go ahead and swap that o-ring over for one of these get that reinstalled and then switch over to the primary side get that drained and then we'll cover refilling uh how much where all that plus a fancy new little jug that i got down at o'reilly's to help me not overfill things because i i don't really measure i just eyeball and that's not great so anyway so gonna back to draining and then back to you hold up all right so we're still draining so what i got here is just this little funnel with a hose that i just picked up at O'Reilly, it was less than 10 bucks, but it gives me, if I can get that light out of the way, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, so on and so forth. And I know that my transmission wants 20 to 24 ounces, so I can fill straight up to there, open this little valve here, and now it's gonna drain right into the bike, and I don't have to keep pouring, check the line or check the line so and i'm sure a lot of you are out there saying it's not that freaking hard you moron quit being lazy i don't i don't want to stop being lazy it it's right in my lazy wheelhouse so that's what i got i'm gonna try it yeah, if it ends up crapping out on me i'll let you all know but i like the idea that i can pour in exactly how much and then i can just drop it in there and easy enough you know i don't have to keep pouring checking pouring checking so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to top that off to 24 ounces since it costs 20 to 24 i'll just go 24 if it you know worst case scenario i find a way to uh, unfortunately probably drain some fluid out probably more than i need because it's not the easiest thing to get to uh, smart money would be start low add more which i might do i might put it in at you know 22 ounces check it add more because that you know legit does make more sense so i'll give you guys that so let me get that going while the oil takes till next week to finish draining so yeah all right so we got the oil filter out of there but before i could 
get that out, you'll see we've got a sensor right there. I don't know what it's for at all, if it's a knock sensor, if it's an oil pressure sensor, or what that is, to be honest with you. But there was a 3 16 bolt holding it in, and I had to get that out of the way so I could access the filter and pull that out with, because this was all up in the way. So I said, filter's out, now it's just pissing all over everything, making a goddamn mess. Worst design ever, I don't understand, but I guess they don't, you know, didn't ask my opinion. So I'm gonna let that drain out a bit. We're gonna hit that with some brake clean, get the residue out, you know, pop our new filter in. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't pre-fill these. I do hit the rubber gasket with a little bit of oil. And then I just thread it in there till it touches and then give it about another half turn past that all by hand because I don't want this thing to seize on there later on down the road. So that being said, since I don't pre-fill it, it will fire the bike up, let it run for a little bit, and then I have to check my oil level in the oil bag over there because that will now be a little low how much i don't know but we're, we'll check it anyway once the oil filter has a chance to fill so that looks like it's about done we'll gear up to get the new one on there and then all that's left is going to be our primary so pretty simple all right so got the primary here filled that was 26 ounces and again that that fancy little funnel that I got from O'Reilly's worked great just kind of shoved the nozzle right in through here and opened it up and went right where I wanted it aside from making a big old mess when I pulled that oil filter all in all everything came out pretty clean but next time I'm out at Harley I'm gonna have to go and pick up another one of these style filters because it didn't dawn on me that this might not be the same as those with the the rubber silicone ring so i'm going to reuse this one for now until i can get out to lone wolf again i'll buy another one pop this off pop the new one in we'll call it a day none of the gasketing seems to be missing so i think i'll be all right on a temporary basis so let me finish uh getting this together and by the way this was a t these mine were t27 through here I want to adjust the, the clutch here, but I also don't want to relieve the pressure off the clutch cable. So I think this I will reserve until I get the new gasket, pop this off, loosen my clutch cable up there, snug that, you know, adjust this to where I want it, which is about a half turn off, snug it down. Just the way I know that's dialed in, all my fluids are fresh, my oil filter is fresh, just, everything I now have a, a timeline of completion. So I'm gonna get this buttoned up, get this out of the way. I'm gonna have to put it somewhere else, step in it since I've still gotta empty my main container. Get this back on the ground and get back to you guys. Okay, so mess is cleaned up. Ram bike up to temp. Oil level in the oil bag dropped right to where it ought to be so I don't have to worry about adding anything. Uh, levels everywhere else are great so I think we did another successful three hole change it it's really simple I was really on the fence about whether or not to even do this video because there's just so many out there but you know what maybe it because it's a, a old 2000 soft tail it's like maybe there's somebody out there who doesn't know or doesn't want to look or is like me and it's just exceedingly lazy and just want to be given the answer here you go to the best of my abilities um which my abilities are way down so but you know it's kind of where we're at oh uh so figure everybody get a laugh out of this coming back from the frosty buns run that i did a few weeks back um, booking it down I-90 here. Yeah, I mean, absolutely doing the speed limit the whole time. Having a hell of a good time. The previous owner told me this motor got built up from a 1450 to a 1550, which by my math should be about a 95 kit in this thing. I believe it. I mean, it's only a five speed, but I was 
absolutely doing the, the speed limit down the freeway and this thing was just eating up everything I had to throw at it and wanting more. You know, it came to a stop with my, my buddy with his heritage, it's a 103, and we hammered it. And I'll be damned if this little Springer here didn't go toe to toe with his 103. So this is definitely a hopped up motor. So I'm excited that that part of his story was accurate. On the downside, I think the friskiness or the frogginess of that freeway ride might have fried my speed sensor. So I did take a look at it. For those of you who don't know, actually let me get a flash out here so you can actually see what I'm pointing at. This thing right here. Whoop, there we go. That is your vehicle speed sensor that goes up into the ECM and tells you how fast you're going, or at least it's supposed to. And I think that's like a 3 16 Allen head there. So there's three small screws uh, on that speed sensor that goes down inside the transmission. And I guess it detects something about a, a bearing or a gear or some black voodoo magic in the transmission. I don't know how it works. But on that magnet was a fair amount of shavings. Again, nothing to be concerned with, but they were there. So I was like, okay, well, maybe this is disrupting the electromagnetic signal going through. So I wiped all that off, cleaned it up, put it back in, and nothing. So I'm really hoping that it's just the speed sensor that's gone, speed sensor that's gone bad. It's gonna run about 85 bucks out the door from my dealer. Um, and the reason I think that's the problem is because when I'm running, Anything over 10, 15 mile an hour, my needle drops to zero. My check engine light comes on. I can hear this thing just in the back, trying to do its job. I mean, it has one job and I'm not letting it do it. So, but as soon as I come to a stop, my odometer comes back on. That's still recording my mileage. You know, the check engine light goes off. And once I start rolling, the needle comes up hits about 10 and went after that. So based on my research and readings, it's my speed sensor. So after payday, I'm gonna get one of those ordered and we'll probably do a video on swapping out the speed sensor on a 2000 soft tail. But I've got one more project coming up and I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is, but it's in this box and it's straight out of China and not cause I bought it, so my neighbor gave it to me and I was eyeballing it, but when I wanted to buy the higher quality one, it was out of stock. So don't go nowhere, stay tuned till next time. All those wonderful 80s, 90s TV show catchphrases we all saw as a kid. Got another project coming. I, you know, Hopefully that'll be dropping Sunday, You know, next Sunday, not tomorrow, Sunday. So again, questions, comments, concerns, let me know. If you would, hit the button, do the thing and the stuff. I super appreciate that. Uh, otherwise, we'll catch you all next time. Later.